I don't know. I, I you guys scare me sometimes. We scare <laughs> you. Well, How am well, I scary? Well, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't get this as far as a, I, I don't understand what you guys are, are saying, and I love you sincerely. <laughs> but it sounds like a lot of theological googly gook, you know, when you guys are talking about the plan of God. Because it sounds like you're, you're sitting there and you're trying to rationalize this thing out in your head. Understand, we don't know the mind of God. We, we get that. I, I understand that completely, 100%. But, you, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter how much you try to explain it away. If you say God sees me do something and responds accordingly, it's not his plan anymore. It's yeah. my plan. That's the point I've been trying to get across to the church forever. Yeah. The one point that they cannot understand. If God, like people say foreknowledge, that means, well, he sees into the future. He sees what I'm going to do, and he responds accordingly. Well, that's not his plan. That's your plan that he's implementing. And people can't understand it. And I, I hear some of that from you guys as well, of just kind of like, I mean, what's, 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 the, what's the big deal of thinking, okay, God has a plan, and God, it's not a fill-in-the-blank plan. It's a definitive plan that has names in it of what he's going to do and what's what's wrong with believing that do you think it totally takes free will out well i think we i think we put a lot of emphasis on free will and it doesn't necessarily that oh my gosh we worship it you've i mean we make we like you've said before lee we make a hundred decisions a day that God has no bearing on necessarily, right? No. I mean, that's that's our free will to decide that I want yeah. that I wanted to wear this blue shirt today, right? That <laughs> I had the, <laughs> yeah. Maybe he picked my clothing out too. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, what if what if he made you pick that shirt out that says y'all need Jesus, and you get into a conversation with somebody? Blah, 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 <laughs> see, there you go. You never know. Here, this is how I keep settling. It. This is how I keep settling this with me is we keep saying that God saw me do something, and had to change His plan or react to it. And I don't think He I sees things. I, I well, I just I don't think no matter where we land on free will versus predeterminism, I don't think He sees things linearly like that. He doesn't have to look ahead and adjust. He just sees it, and it's so hard for us to grasp that because we are bound by this idea of time and things happening one after another, and he just, he can't see it that way. Yeah, I think what you're saying there, um, the, the biggest problem is the word react. Yeah. I, I don't see it as, as a reaction. I see it as God being all-knowing. I see it as much bigger than that. Yeah. Um, and I, I think if, if you take some time to read uh, 1 Samuel 23, so I'm just familiar with it because I, I was teaching on it just a, a few weeks back. Uh, first time of 23 had some real interesting concepts which were happening there. So it's not part of uh, of Samuel where Saul is hunting down David and he's trying to exterminate him. Saul has gone off to uh, a city called Nob and while he's there he is killing the royal priesthood in his attempt to try and track down David and to try and get some kind of... Uh, qualifier as to where can I find the man one of the priests a man there, Abiathar um, so the text is so small on screen, I can't read it so I'm going off the top of my head here mm -hmm. um, I think the priest was called Abiathar he actually fled from Nob and came down to Kila which is where David was stationed with his men and he brought with him the ephod and while mm -hmm. he was there God actually asked him or he actually asked God two questions and the question was um, is Saul going to come down here um, and he's going to come down here and find me and are the people of Kila are they actually going to give me up when, whenever he comes and God gave him the answer to both of those questions with yes, yes he would Saul will come down and uh, the people here will give you up but at that point he fled, he left Kila so those events which God said would happen they, they didn't take place because they were up and, and ran mm. so that's where I get this concept that God knew it was going to happen in as we like one course of history but because of David's maneuver to what God said was going to take place there was a, a different a different plan put in place now we all got to study this for next time <laughs> yeah. um, 
Oh, those are great books for Second Samuel. Fantastic books. Uh, if you give me two texts, I, I just can't read it on your screen. I can give you the, the verse. Let me see if I can find it. So it. So God has several perfect plans that are not mm. responses. I, I don't think. I, I think. Um, <laughs> he has it's complicated. Several, se se several, several possibilities for, for your life. Yes, I think there's several. I mean, I mean, okay. I think, I think his knowledge is so vast. I mean, you, you imagine right now if you took your finger, and oh, okay, make make a choice. There's four of us here on screen. Make a choice and put your finger on one key in your keyboard. <laughs> so, so, okay. so, so, so can you can you choose any key on your keyboard that you please? Yeah. And then push it. So put your finger on the key and push it. I'll have to act like it. I can't push buttons. I don't know if I want to or not. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> but, but, so I, I could totally lose my picture here if I did that. <laughs> so, so, I had to so be careful. Press the buttons. <laughs> so so that, that, is, that is exactly the concept. So you have the freedom to put your finger on any key that you want. You could push any key that you want, but different things would happen depending on which key that you actually touched. If your keyboard had an, a power button for your, your computer, it would switch your whole computer off and you have to restart mm -hmm. the stream. Uh, that would be something which would have happened. Would, would that be part of God's plan for tonight's stream? Or would that just be what happened in the course of conversation trying to work out, you know, whether we had the freedom to push the button or not? Oh, well, yeah, I mean... Or, or, or you might have chose, oh, I picked the, the, the power button, but now I will move my finger away. So you're actually using your own freedom, your own will, your own knowledge, your own understanding to, to make a, a different... A different so this that, that kind of goes back to, to what Lee said, has said before, where, you know, a, you know, point A, B, C, and D, and then in between there, I mean, so so, yeah. let's, let's say you even go that route. Let's say you, there's certain points in your life where God says, you're going to be here, you're going to be here, you're going to be here. There's still free, you're still saying there's free will in between. You have a choice to do what you want to do. So once yes. again, it, how does that, how does that free will between the points not cause you to miss one of those points? You know what I'm saying? Like, what if I do something stupid and end up getting myself killed? Well, I'm not, not going to be at that next right. point. But the, but the perfect, not necessarily the perfect plan, but the argument would be that you're not going to get killed. Because if God already mm -hmm. has, if you're at A and you've gone through B and you've gone to C and you're getting ready to go to D, if, if God has a D for you, he may not have a D, but if he has a D for you, you're going to be at D. Mm-hmm. And and I, I I think we can all agree, all of us, is is that how you get there, you know, okay, there's a lot of free will involved there, a lot of stupid decisions involved there, a lot of things have to, you know, that we can do. But you're going to be at D. You're going to be there because that's God's plan. So I, I don't people have a, a tendency I, I think God is not really concerned with the minutia of, of our plan, you know, as far as what we're going to wear and where we're going to eat. I, I think there's a lot more liberty than we think we have. But I also think that there, you know, and I've talked about this before, you know, that these guys have heard it, you know, all the time. But, but A, B, C, D, E, F, G, that's the plan. You're going to be there. 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 Mm -hmm. And there's room in between all those points for you to have all the free will that you can gloriously handle. But there's still... Right, but they're still, but, and that's the way I reconciled the two, because if I don't know if I necessarily believe in the several perfect wills, uh, I think God has, from the beginning, He has. I don't think God has a plan for me, but I think God has a plan, and I'm part of that plan. Mm. Like you guys are part of that plan. I think. And, uh, Oh, go ahead. I, I, yeah, I, I do think he does have a plan for you. O other, ways, other ways, how do we discern anything which he teaches us or shows us from the scriptures? Oh, so, I, think so we just, I, I would agree with you, but I think we're talking semantics here. In, in I, a way that I, 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 don't, I, I wouldn't say that God has a plan for me. I would say God has a plan, and I'm part of it. We're talking about the same thing, but at the same time, I think there's a... a a difference between the two as far as your mindset. I'm sorry, I, I totally cut you off. What, what were you saying? 
I'm old. I have to say stuff when I, I'm thinking of it or I'll forget it. <laughs> I've been holding on to something. I, I, um, I, I, I'm just scared to death of, of God reacting to me. Okay. Yeah. So let's just let's just kind of I, throw that out of the window. <laughs> I don't think, yeah, 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 I don't think we can do something that would cause God to react. Again, I think, and the the way I settle this is the idea of him being outside of time. I do think, though, like, uh, like Garth was saying earlier, that he knows things or sees things that may not happen, right? Uh, I was driving down the road with one of my boys the other day, and he was talking about this idea of free will or um, what type of control there was, and I said, you know, I could turn... I could make this turn, drive this car to its max, and get in an accident, right? If God's plan for me still has things for me to do, I won't die, right? But I still made the choice to drive like an idiot. Now, that could mean that I, have, that I get to finish his plan out with no legs or the loss of one arm that I didn't necessarily have to do without because of that accident, right? Right? But it's not going to change his plan for me, but my consequence would be different. See, I, yeah. as, as long as his plan for me doesn't require my arms, I don't have to have them. You know what I mean? I could be stupid enough to lose right. my arms. Right. 